And it was a great fire and explosion at the Speculator Mine in 1916. Now, there were supposed to be escape hatches to get out through the bulkheads, but the boss was cheap and they weren't there. Over 200 miners perished during that, that terrible event. You know, you go to Butte, Montana, out on the flats below where the town is, up on the hill. You walk for, for miles through the Union Miners Cemetery. You will see the huge collective graves where everybody was put after the big explosions. But then you will see Serbian and, and uh, Croatian graves. You'll see Assyrian, Lebanese. You'll see tombstones in Arabic. Every kind of feet that trod the earth trod it at one time or the other up in Butte, Montana. I was looking for what I could find about the Speculator Mine Fire. I went to the Little Silver Bow Historical Society up there, which is in a warehouse. A lot of what they had was in boxes in that cold, cold room. Well, I went through a lot of it, and you know, I found that some of those miners that were trapped in the Speculator Mine and never made it out, they wrote letters to their loved ones inside their time books. And, of course, when they were finally exhumed, those letters were found. Well, I found one of those. A letter from J.D. Moore, a series from his time book, uh, written to his wife. And I want to read those to you. And then you're going to listen to a song by uh, Kate Brisbane and Jody Steckert that I made up. Another kind of grim story, I was going through a, uh, a garbage pit in uh, in Park City, Utah. That was before it was a, a ski resort. It was just a, a mining town, Silver King Coalition Mines. Well, I found a little tin with a, like a small tobacco tin with a belt clip. I asked around and nobody would tell me what it was. And finally, Ken Webb at the little Photoshop, he said, well, he thought that was a morphine tin, that sometimes miners would carry morphine with them underground so that it got trapped that they, they wouldn't have to suffer, they wouldn't have to burn to death, and it was also a comfort to their relatives. Um, and, and, but many of them were Catholics, coming from Eastern Europe, many, many Catholics, which, of course, suicide is a mortal sin, and that's why it was a secret, and that's why people wouldn't talk to me about it. So I'll read you J.D. Moore's letters, and then we'll go right into the Miner's Lullaby. First letter. Dear wife, this may be the last message you will get from me. The gas broke about 11.15 p.m. I tried to get all the men out, but the smoke was too strong. I got some of the boys with me in a drift and put up in a bulkhead. If anything happens to me, you'd better sell the house and go to California and live. You will know your Jim died like a man and his last thoughts was for his wife that I love better than anyone on earth. We'll meet again. Tell mother and the boys goodbye. With love to my wife, and may God take care of you. Your loving Jim, J.D. Moore. Second letter. Dear Pat, well, we are waiting for the end. I guess it won't be long. We take turns rapping on the pipe, so if the rescue crew is around, they will hear us. Well, my dear wife, try not to worry. I know you will. But trust in God, everything will come out all right. There is a young fellow here, Clarence Marthy. He has a wife and two kitties. Tell her we'd done the best we could, but the cards were against us. Goodbye, loving wife. Third letter. All alive, but air getting bad. One small piece of candle left. Think it is all off. Fourth letter on the cover of the book. In the dark. 